What's up and welcome to another episode of Football Every Day brought to you by Maybank Premier Accounts. Coming to you live and direct, of course, from Studio V here at Wanatama. My name is Nelson, as usual, and uh, back with us today, Mr. Shabby Singh. Good to have you back, bro. Ian, nice shirt. Likewise. Hey, thanks. Ian, Ian as well. Um, <laughs> guys, you know, some great games and uh, lots of missed penalties, at, you know, but peculiarly. But, Shabs, was it a good weekend of football for you? It was. I think it is uh, one of the better weekends. Uh, I think there were some uh, very, very good individual goals and uh, some yeah. very good team goals scored as well. Uh, penalty misses is not something I want to talk about because uh, <laughs> if only Jermaine Defoe had scored, we would have had all three points. Although yeah. I did predict Everton to beat Spurs, yeah. so I suppose one point would be alright for me. Right, okay, yeah. but we've got to start with Chelsea's defeat you know, to Manchester City, bro. I mean, did City deserve the victory or in, in your opinion, or, or was it clearly because of you know, Czech's mistake that well, you know, they I, got I away think, with the win? I think they deserve to win, uh, yeah. simply because I think tactically they were well prepared, you know. Uh, yeah. I compare Man City Chelsea to um, uh, Arsenal uh, Chelsea. And right. what Arsenal didn't do right was to stop Ashley Cole and Ivanovic from getting forward. Because you play Chelsea, you know they, they yeah. are fullbacks. Yeah. You've got yeah. to stop their fullbacks. Robinho set on Ivanovic. Uh, right Phillips made sure that Ashley Cole didn't see too much of the ball. And then they made it a battle in midfield. But Nigel De Jong's yeah. energy, yeah. such high energy levels, well. you know, he closed yeah. Deco down, you know, Balak down, yeah. Lampard down uh, very, very yeah. easily. But in return, when uh, the uh, Man City uh, midfield had the ball, uh, you know, nobody was closing them down. So on that, tactically, and also the fact that Edibayo and Tevez decided that they were going to play, yeah. you know, because you know they are the most frustrating players for me right now yeah, in the Premier yeah. League because you never know when they will turn up. They turned up and it was a deserved victory. Yeah, I got to agree with you there. But bro, you do you think City's performance on the night um, was it impressive or you know off more of an off day for Chelsea? Yeah, you know, it was impressive at parts, you know. But um, there were times, especially I think it was the last last half an hour, they could barely string three passes together. So I guess they still lack a bit of that experience. They had some good counter-attacking chances, but because they just didn't have that composure, they could have, they should have wrapped up that game when Chelsea were powering yeah, forward. Yeah, had a chance yeah. as well, I think, yeah. uh, breakaway. Yeah. Um, you know, let's move on, guys. I mean, uh, United, Man United's easy 4-0 win at West Ham Sheps. I mean, I think the difference in class was obvious, right? It was. I must say I was disappointed with West Ham. I thought, you know, looking at Man United's lineup, I thought West Ham would feel confident they could get something out of it, but... Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Uh, credit to uh, Manchester United, you know, they played with um, a, a kind of a makeshift back four. Uh, but, you know, they were, they were a makeshift back four, but they were still, you know, not troubled by West Ham. I don't know what uh, Gianfranco Zola's future is going to be. Right, but yeah. Chefs, i got to ask you, I mean, if, if you rate Darren Gibson, Chefs, I mean, Scholes' long-term replacement? Uh, but to be honest, I don't think he's going to become yeah. that you know reach that level uh, you know yeah. i think he will be another one of those midfielders uh, who will do a job when, and when needed to odd, odd uh, yes you know he's yeah while. he will score yeah, yeah. one or two uh, uh, great goals yeah. but i don't see him doing that on a consistent basis i, I mean, think in that sense yeah. he's a bit like fletcher he would be a fringe player the best he can hope for is to maybe someday reach the heights that fletcher is at right now uh, but he has a bit more in his locker in terms of goal scoring than Fletcher, so maybe yeah. that's his advantage. Think, yep. yeah. That's his yeah. that's his value yeah. to the team. But Ian, quickly gotta ask. I mean, what impressed you about United's performance on the night? What impressed you most? I mean, Antonio Valencia. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's finally selling. Yeah. When they first bought him, I was like, oh my gosh, sixteen million for him. Uh, I thought it was a bit too pricey. I thought he yeah. didn't have Definitely necessarily have that class. Yeah. yeah. To, to maybe make it, I was hoping for Aaron Lennon actually. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't turn out, but it didn't turn out well in the first few weeks. But now, I, th he, I think he's looking coming, really valuable money. The game, right? It took a while. Yeah. I mean, when you watched him play for Wigan, you always knew, you know, that this is a dependable right side midfielder. And he yeah. is a right side midfielder. Yeah. He's yeah. not the right winger as yeah. in, uh, Ronaldo was. He's not a flair player, but he's a very, very solid, hardworking player. Uh, maybe a little better in terms of uh, uh, finishing than Park Ji Sung. Yeah. But similar in that, and it took a long while to settle good, in. Good but now he's well. settled yeah. in. Yeah. You uh, know, there's just just no stopping him. Good performance. All right, just before our first break today, Sheps, um, gonna ask you very quickly your thoughts on Spurs throwing away you know what seemed like a sure three points against Everton, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I was talking to Ian uh, before we, we we got on the show. You know, uh, we, we're comparing English managers and the Scottish managers. <laughs> English managers love to win. You know, right. and Harry Redknapp right. two up. Let's go for the third goal. You know, try to make it a, a big win. Scottish managers, they hate to lose. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, take, uh, take your pick. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> nice one, man. But it's time for our first break here on Football Every Day, brought to you by Maybank Premier Accounts, of course. So do stay tuned as we'll be right back after these messages for more football chat and banter.
Welcome back to Football Every Day, brought to you by Maybank Premier Accounts. With me, Nelson, of course, along with Sheps and Ian. Um, getting back to the chat and the weekend's results, guys. Um, you know, we now take a look at as much as we don't really like to Liverpool. You know, and they're. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind <laughs> <laughs> talking about them they're failing every four. week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and they're nil nil draw at Blackburn. I mean, Sheps, um, Steven Gerrard has come out and said that you know, um, he's really yearning for the league title. You know, which is one trophy that he's not won. You yeah. know, since he's been playing. Um, and judging by the way the Reds are playing at the moment, um, you, you've got a feel for the guy, right? Uh, very much so. I don't think that, that um, Steven Gerrard uh, will win the league, uh, a league title before he retires. Yeah. Uh, as long uh, as it's with Liverpool. Yeah, there, there was yeah. a great opportunity last season where I think they peaked, you know, and they did peak as a team, as individuals as well. And it's all gone, you know, down the drain now, out of the Champions League. Uh, you know, there's nothing really to play for, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to to see. I mean, Gerard making the right noises because I, I mean, I, you know, uh, would think there is some problems in the dressing room uh, because I don't think the players uh, like the way uh, Rafa manages them. Yeah. Right. I think you know, there's a lot underneath the surface that we don't know about. Yeah. But I did say at the start of uh, at the end of last season, towards the end of last season, that if they don't win the league, I think the team will break up. And I think the team will break up eventually. Right, I mean, I tell you what, Liverpool have got a tough fixture this weekend as well. But um, we'll talk a bit more about that later on. But Sheps, will, you know, will Rafa buy in January, you think? Um, I wouldn't trust Rafa with any money. <laughs> uh, because yeah. you don't know what he will buy in. Exactly. Ian, I mean, you know, yeah. you know, he's given money. He signed a, an injured player, uh, you know, who's only perhaps going to make his debut uh, in, what, almost mid-December? Yeah. No. I mean, and he has made a lot of bad signings. I mean, the Fernando Torres was pretty obvious because Fernando yeah, Torres is a world-class striker. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants him, you know. Yep, so, yep. Like, like I said, you know, I mean, the American owners, you know, they have made their money the hard way. They are not going to let someone squander it. Someone, especially someone no, who doesn't right. seem yeah. to know what he's doing. Yeah. So, at this moment in time, no, right. I wouldn't give him yeah. any money. Bro, I mean, yeah. I think his best bet would be to save up in January, don't spend, and try to rebuild next season. Because if they spend this season, what, what is there left to play for? Yeah, yeah. Maybe they, they might be desperate enough for the Champions League spot to want to go and buy somebody, but they should just at least try to work with what they have, get that top four spot, and then launch on from next season. I right, mean, right. Ian, I mean, you know, he's what this is his what fifth year in there. You know, surely, yeah. you know, in five years, you know that the team has to be yeah. uh, reformed, the team has to be yeah. freshened up. I mean, you, you compare that with Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, with Arsene Wenger. Wenger, you know, constantly their teams are changing over, over three, four seasons, three, yeah. four seasons. Even yeah. David Moyes. But, yeah, yeah you know, Moyes. Yeah. But, yeah. but you don't see any development happening uh, at, Liverpool, uh, right? at Liverpool. So why should you trust him with money? Because, you know, money to me is a short term uh, gap. Once you have, you, you've done a, a good uh, preparation or, or you develop a team, you know, and then you need to go out there and say, look, I need 30 million to buy the one player who's going to make the yeah. difference. Then you do it. Yeah. But here you are fumbling about, you know, you're buying, you know, yeah. substandard players. Uh, yeah. Why? Yeah, so I mean, last one, Liverpool broke. Realistically, the only titles they can hope for now are the Europa <laughs> League, League and um, FA Cup possibly. But, you know, mm -hmm. even if they do win one of these, right, um, it'll be scant consolation for Rafa, right? I think it'll be pretty good consolation considering <laughs> how the season has been so far. I think they'll see it as a real victory. It's at least, right, uh, right. yeah. It will be a shame. Yeah. It will be a shame if they win the Europa League or the FA Cup and say we've had a good season. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what but I they saying. will. Yeah, they yeah. definitely yeah. will. Rafa will. He's already try trying to put a positive spin. It will spin. be, you know, uh, yeah. uh, you know. I mean, it's like winning the Carling Cup. Yeah, right. Yeah. We'll get more chat in Liverpool later on in the show. But let's get into our email of the week now, uh, which comes from Roslan Alias, who's a Man City fan. Um, basically, guys, um, Roslan says he's disappointed with the team under Mark Hughes at the moment, um, mainly in terms of tactical acumen. Uh, take, for example, the Manchester derby, um, where he failed to kill time you know, by uh, making a substitution, whereas a certain Jose Mourinho would have done such a thing. <laughs> Sheps, you, you agree I with think, Roslan? I think the manager who is not there is always the better manager. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I, I think Mark Hughes needs time. You, know, you don't buy so many players together and expect them to play like a team yeah, overnight yeah. but the one consolation is when it comes to the big matches against the big teams Man City always perform well so we know that is the standard Some they can, they, least, they, they right? can yeah, reach yeah. they can compete against the top top teams so what they need to do now is to be consistent throughout the season and that will come with time 
Right. Yeah. Ian, very quickly, I, I Man think City. they can't really. Yeah, Man Marcus. City fans can't really complain if they lose four three to Manchester United in the ninety six yeah. minute of a game, and you can't blame Marcus because of that. Yeah. Nobody yeah. could see that coming, and everybody thought everybody thought that they would lose pretty com- com- convincingly, right? Yeah. But they they, right, they, they made a fight out of it. Uh, thanks for the great email, Roslan, and for your efforts, you picked up a great prize courtesy of Adidas. Uh, and if you're a Maybank account holder, I'll tell you what, you'll also take home an exclusive Maybank pack, alright? Uh, well, we'll be in touch soon for price collection details, but if you want to write to us just like Roslan did, uh, do drop us a line at football at thestar.com.my. More Football Chat to follow in our third and final segment right after this, so stay tuned to Football Every Day, brought to you by Maybank Premier Accounts, and we'll be right back. <laughs> And you're back with us for the third and final segment of today's show. Um, this is where we dissect the weekend's upcoming fixtures, of course. Um, so let's start with the big one at Anfield, where Liverpool face Arsenal. Sheps, both teams, you know, would definitely be disappointed. I mean, even at this stage, at only this stage of the season, you know, instead of a potentially title-deciding match, right? I mean, it's kind of more like a third, fourth placing. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, decider, right? Yeah, you're right there. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's um, not the way, you know, things have been going. But at least for Arsenal, you know, they are losing to the big teams. I mean, they lose yeah. to Man United, lose Man to Chelsea, City. Uh, Man City. The well, I mean, teams yeah. that who are in the top five, but they don't, you know, drop points against others. Whereas for Liverpool, it's just gone bad. I think we've, we've spent enough time about them. Uh, I, but somehow, when it comes to Anfield, the, the fact that Liverpool don't have to try to be clever or try to be creative against <laughs> Arsenal, because that's when they get found out. Yeah. If they play their solid, compact, defensive, boring game, They've got a chance, you know, right? bore the death out of you and then score a goal or two. So based on that brand of football, I think they could win this game. Wait, so what kind of game do you see? I mean panning out as, as, um, as, as, as it always will be with goal. Arsenal Arsenal will yeah. have uh, more possession and uh, Liverpool will be stronger uh, physically uh, but uh, will rely on set pieces I think for goals bro Ian I mean you know, do you see a winner in this one? yeah only one yeah. <laughs> only one there's only one winner in, the, in this I think Arsenal will win yeah so Arsenal going to yeah. go to Anfield and win yeah I think so get their season you know kind of back on track <laughs> yeah. let me ask you for a score prediction then I'd say maybe 2-1 to the Arsenal 2-1 to the Arsenal yes. So no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, over at, Old, <laughs> over at Old Trafford guys, you know, Man United welcome Martin O'Neill's Aston Villa. Sheps, United are back in form, you know. Um, so after Portsmouth and West Ham, surely they, they'll, they'll be expected to beat Villa, right? They will be expected to, to win and, and uh, they should. And there's no reason after the way they demolished uh, Wolfsburg in yeah. Germany uh, with a makeshift uh, team, defense, you know, yeah. uh, makeshift defence, makeshift midfield, everything was makeshift about them, players playing out of position, but what a performance. And Michael Owen getting a hat-trick, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I would like to look people in the face and say, yes, did you doubt me when I said Michael Owen was going to be a success for <laughs> yeah. Man United? You can go now. Yeah. I mean, come on, he's a natural yeah. goal scorer. Yeah. Give him yeah. time. If he's fully fit, you know, he yeah. was going to deliver. Definitely. And what a way to make a statement, yeah. especially yeah. when you're playing with a team that's you know, really, really Definitely. weakened on paper uh, yeah. that the team is not too uh, experienced. Mm-hmm. And for you, as a superstar, you c- step up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't exactly. that brilliant? Yeah. What more yeah. do you want? Yeah, bro, you, you agree with Chaps? It's going to be a win for United or a, a Villa good enough for a result? Uh, uh, an upset result at, at I mean, Trafford, man. As a fan, it's, it's, it's a bit hard to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Because the defence is so weakened, you, 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 it's hard to predict. But Carrick has been doing a fantastic job, you know? As a sweeper. Yeah, yeah. we should just put him there for, for the rest of the season. It's fantastic yeah, drop Rio for it. Sell Rio yeah, for it. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody would buy him, you know, why not? So, <laughs> so Chaps, I mean, very quickly, what kind of team do you see Fergie putting out this weekend? Uh, I think he'll be looking at the players uh, who yeah. had little niggles but who are fit to come back. You know, it will. He will definitely make changes. Michael Owen to start then. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I think he will like to use Michael Owen sparingly. So maybe start with Michael Owen on the bench. Yeah. You know, two games in the space of a few days physically might be a, a, a problem yeah. for Michael Owen. 
and leave it to Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. He knows, you know, how to handle right. McLaurin. Yeah. But uh, Rooney and Berbatov are both doubtful. Yeah. So maybe might we start, might right? see Owen. Well, when when they say doubtful, that means they are going to win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've learned that by now. Football right? speak. But, so Shep's quickly score prediction. Uh, I'm gonna go with a narrow two-one to Man United. Two-one to Man United. Great stuff. <laughs> okay, and yeah. struggling Bolton play host to Manchester City. Ian. Can Bolton get a positive result from this? I mean, they're really struggling at the bottom, right, at the moment. Uh, right. I, I think mean, against City, the City side that yeah. look like they're coming back to form. I think they'll go back to their drawing ways. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'll be back yeah. to drawing ways. Yeah. Because Bolton will say, all right, come on now, you know, well. we'll yeah. get stuck in. And you know, Bolton, they've got a very, yeah. very hard running midfield mm -hmm. and they could just trouble Man City. Right. And very quickly, Sheps, score prediction for Chelsea versus Everton at Stamford Bridge. Mm. Oh, Chelsea, Everton. I'm going to go with uh, Chelsea winning 2-1. Chelsea winning 2-1. Yeah. Close game, but I think Chelsea will nick it. Chelsea will nick it, yeah, I've got to agree there. Um, so just before we go, right, um, this week's Football Everyday Fun Fact is of course on United's hat-trick hero, Michael Owen. Um, guys, did you know that Owen owns several cars and a helicopter and enjoys horse racing and gambling? Sheps, any similarities between you and Owen there? Uh, not at all. <laughs> no? I no. think actually Newcastle uh, fans yeah. hated him for that. I think, yeah. yeah. I, I, That's think, I think there's like only one him. blip there. I think it's the gambling. Yeah. I think sometimes, I mean, the rumours, alleged rumours yeah. that I've heard, sometimes he gets a bit overboard with his gambling habit. Right, right. And I mean, somehow you, you're kind of going to draw controversy to yourself. If you're a footballer and right. you're into gambling. And, yeah, mm, but right. he could always sell his helicopter. Yeah, I think the helicopter <laughs> is a thing that really, really ticked off Newcastle fans because he'd be commuting back and forth. Yeah. I mean, you're a professional footballer. I mean, why don't you just move into the area and yeah. stay there and be committed to your training? Very, very modest, so. humble person. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> with all those cars and cars. all of us yeah. agree yeah. that. Not all of us agree he still can score goals, right? He's oh, yes. always been able to score goals. Yes. Baller, right? Actually, yeah. what? Yeah. Fabio Capello. What is yeah. Capello thinking right now? That's interesting. Right. Yeah. Pay attention for Capello. Guys, great stuff. Pleasure as always. See you back next week. Till we see you next week here on Football Every Day brought to you by Maybank Premier Accounts. It's Shah for me, Nelson, and of course, Ian and Sheps. We'll see you soon. Enjoy your football.